Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I will be talking to us about one of the common questions they ask when you go for biomedical scientist job interview. In most cases, they do ask, you know, uh, what do you do if your internal quality control sample fails? Sometimes they may not say internal, they may say, what do you do if your quality control sample fails? Sometimes they may say, what actions are you going to take if you notice that your quality control sample has failed? Okay, so before we get into that, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Lobodo. I'm a lecturer in biomedical science. I'm also a biomedical scientist here in the United Kingdom. So yeah, let's get into this. Now, first of all, once you notice that quality control sample fell, it is important that you first of all know why do we have to do quality control. So I have a video on quality control, like types of quality control. So you can, you know, um, look at that video. Okay. Now, but why do we do it? So because it is important to make sure you do quality control and it has to pass before running a patient sample. So once it fails, it is a problem and that needs to be resolved before running any patient sample on that analyzer. So I'm going to share to you some of my personal opinion and thoughts about the approach on how you should be able to answer the question. And what I'm going to recommend is this. So in answering that question, one of the things you might need to say is that, that once you notice that that quality control sample has failed, the first thing you're going to do is to consider temporarily stopping the, temporarily stopping the use of the analyzer and check the factors that could contribute in that very control sample failure. okay? Now, you may also need to consider um, whether there is a possibility of rerunning any patient sample that possibly have gone through that analyzer already. So do we need to rerun a patient sample? Then of course, the final thing that you might need to check in terms of your consideration, and this consideration is something you, are, you have to do before even starting your investigation. Then another thing you then may need to consider is to check your quality control evergenics graph or plot. So when you open the, don't just say the control sample has failed. You need to open the levergenics graph. When you open the levergenics graph, you then need to know what exactly failed. For example, if you run a quality control sample, you may be running a sample, a quality control sample on many parameters. So what you might need to ask yourself, what exactly is failing? Is it that all the parameters are failing or is it one of the parameters are failing? Let me give you an example. If you run a quality control on full blood count sample, so that is going to measure hemoglobin, hematocrit, you know, uh, WBC, differentials, of course, and total platelet and all of that. So what you then need to ask yourself, is it that all these parameters failed or is it one of the parameters that failed? Let's say if it was in coagulation, maybe you've run a quality control on PTNR or APTT or fibrinogen or d or anything. So if a control fell, let's say on the normal plasma, you need to ask yourself, where did it fail? Did it fail in all the parameters that you run or is it a one of the parameters? So that is why you need to look at the levergenics graph to find out what exactly failed. Now let's go to biochemistry. Maybe you've run a number of, uh, you measure you know, a number of parameters using, using quality control samples and it fell. So you need to go and check what exactly fell. Was it alkaline phosphate that failed? Was it uh, total blue rubin that failed? What exactly fell? So what that fell will not determine the areas you're going to investigate. But for the purpose of this very presentation, we are going to see it as quality control sample has failed. But remember why you need to check the levergenics graph, okay? Now, once, you once you've done that, the next thing we're going to look at is what are the factors that are likely to lead to this very control, lead to this quality control sample failing. So now, if they've asked you this question and you've mentioned the importance of quality control, you've mentioned what you're going to consider, then you can tell, you can then tell them there are three main factors that can lead to quality control sample failing. Number one could be the internal quality control sample itself. Number two could be the reagent. Number three could be the analyzer. Okay, so these are the three main reasons why um, the three main um, factors that could associate to internal quality control sample failing. Now we are going to look at each of these very uh, factors individually. So now I'm going to create a problem and I'll tell you how to solve it. Okay. So now when it comes to internal quality control samples, there are factors that could lead to that. Number one, it could be contamination. It could be insufficient samples or underfilled. Okay. So what it means that if it is contaminated, 
that may not affect the result so what are you going to do you might need to get another vibe okay if it is also insufficient you need to now of course get another control sample now another thing you need to check is is the sample in date or has it expired meaning that has a control sample has it expired or is it still in date so what do you do you check the expiring date obviously if it has expired you discard it and get another control sample now another thing you might need to look at is a lot number of that control sample you check is it appropriate is the lot number corresponding with the correct targeted value that is already inputted in that analyzer so if you think that the lot number of the control sample is different from what is already you know uh, the targeted value on the analyzer of course you then need to change it and get a accurate lot okay or appropriate lot number uh, our appropriate lot number of control sample associated with the targeted values okay now another thing is a sample potency so how potent is a sample for example control samples have the validity some of them have the validity for one day that 24 hours some of them 48 hours and it goes on so if it is more than its validity date you might need to consider getting another value okay now another factor could be storage temperature has this uh, control sample stored in appropriate temperature or was it stored in acid recommended temperature if that is the case that obviously need to be corrected as well now one other factor that many people sometimes miss in mentioning is the fact that even if it may it may not be any of these factors but it could be because that control sample was not properly mixed or is not properly mixed before running it on the analyzer that can lead to the control sample failing okay now let's get into the reagent so after the control sample, another factor that could lead to the control sample failing is the fact that it could be the reagent. So with the reagent, again, it could be the reagent volume. You need to check the reagent volume. Is it insufficient? Is it underfilled? That could affect it. Another thing you also check is the, is the reagent in date or has it expired? That is, if it has expired, obviously, you get another, another reagent. If it is also insufficient, you get another reagent. Another thing you consider that is the factor, is the reagent properly stored or or was it stored outside the recommended temperature okay so you need to check the reagent storage now of course you also check the lot number of that very reagent is the lot number of that reagent is it correct okay does it correspond to the batch that is in use okay because each of these very reagents they can have different lots different batch and each of them you know can function differently so you need to check that the reagent in use is has a correct lot number and also the bad the correct batch number or batch um, lot is in use now of course once you have done this another way you can also investigate the reagent is to compare especially when it comes to the storage temperature and all of that so when you look at the difference of the effect on one analyzer so what you're going to do is to compare the analyzer where the quality control sample is failing that is if it is not if it does not fail in all the analyzers so you can compare is there any difference between the reagent on the analyzer that fell for internal quality control sample and the analyzer that did not fail internal quality control sample so you have to compare that analyzer that fell the internal quality control sample with other analyzer okay that didn't fail internal quality control sample another factor that can lead to this is a connector between the analyzer and the uh, reagent so you know the part the part that connects uh, the pipes that connect the analyzer to the reagent helping the analyzer to aspirate the reagent sometimes if it is not properly aligned if it is not properly connected it might make that analyzer unable to aspirate adequate uh, volume of the reagent required and that may affect it so meaning it may aspirate bubbles okay thinking that it has aspirated a reagent and that might give you a wrong grade. that might make the quality control sample to fail so these are the factors when it comes to um, reagent now another factor which is now the final factor is the analyzer itself so if you have investigated the control samples you've investigated the reagent and you think it's not the problem you may then need to consider it could be the analyzer itself with the analyzer you need to check something like the calibration okay maybe next time i'm going to tell us what calibration means so you need to look at what is the, is the calibration is it correct and valid okay because the validity and the current of uh, calibration plays a major role calibration plays a major role 
on how the analyzer will run, on how the analyzer will measure, on how the analyzer will determine. Okay, so you check the calibration to make sure it is correct and it is valid. Now, also you look at the maintenance. Has the maintenance been properly carried out the way it should be carried out? Okay, but no matter what then happen from your investigation, you may then need to consider doing maintenance, doing calibration where appropriate. Okay, and following that, you then rerun your internal quality control sample. When you rerun your internal quality control sample, if it pass, that means you have corrected the problem. Okay, what it then means that the problem is not from the analyzer. That is, if it is not from the quality control sample, from the reagent following your previous investigation, if you come down to that analyzer and you've done the maintenance, done calibration where appropriate, repeat the quality internal quality control and it pass, it then means you've corrected the problem. Okay, now, now let me say something a little bit here. Some of the reason why this might fail is because, for example, if it fell again, you then might need to report it to a senior biomedical scientist. But let me say something about if it passed, you have corrected that problem. What it means that sometimes, remember that each of these very analyzers, they have channels. So there's a possibility that a, a, a blood clot can block the analyzer, can block the channel, or something can, if there can even be bacterial growth on the channel, thereby contaminating the channel, and that can give you, a, that can affect the quality control sample result. Therefore, that is why when you do maintenance, what maintenance do is to kind of do a kind of clearing, fl flushes, you know, there's going to be a, um, a kind of washing or flushing the uh, the channels okay making sure and doing some background check to see that there is nothing that is possibly going to interfere with the result okay and that's why sometimes when you do the maintenance if it fell if the maintenance fell that means there can be underlying cause and that needs to be sorted out because of course until the maintenance pass and the calibration pass you cannot rerun the quality control but let's say the maintenance has passed the calibration pass and you rerun the internal quality control and it passed it means you have corrected it. However, if it fell, you then need to report it to a senior biomedical scientist. Okay. Now, when you report it to a senior biomedical scientist, that may then need to be investigated, and you uh, that may need to be investigated. Okay. And of course, you also need to document your uh, experience or what is going on with the analyzer in the event log. So reporting it in the documenting it in the event log will help someone to know what has been going on with that analyzer. Then, of course, it can also help you to do proper handover. And of course, you also then need to because you've done all you could and the analyzer did, did not, you were not able to solve it. That is, if it fell, if you rerun the internal quality control and it didn't pass, it continued to fail. That means you are not able to solve the problem. And once you have reported it to the senior, documented it in the event log event log the next thing you can then do is to inform the company engineers okay to ask them to come and look at that very analyzer and in most cases when they come they'll look at it some things might need changing and from there they can be able to then correct what is going on with that now before the engineer comes or even while the engineer is there for the fact that that analyzer is not in use it's always advisable to make sure you put that a sign saying that this analyzer is temporarily out of use or you can isolate the analyzer from other analyzer so that no so that someone else will not be able to use it i hope i've been able to you know explain what happens when the quality control sample fails so when your quality control sample fell you need to consider a number of factors like i've said look at your levagenis graph look at are we going to rerun the patient sample that has possibly gone through it or not okay so look at you know uh, the factors that may affect it and what are the main factors three factors the internal quality control sample itself it could be the reagent or it could be the analyzer so i've given you guys the factors you know um associated with the sample and the factors associated with the reagent and the factors associated um, with the analyzer itself and what to do what i'm going to tell you is that when you are answering such questions make sure that you give example and make sure as you create problems make sure you also solve the problem for example if you say you will check the lot number then you say if the lot number is not in use if it does not correspond with the lot number uh, of the analyzer or what that should be used you are going to change it if you say that the reagent you are going to check the expiry date then you say if you find out that the reagent has expired you are going to change it if you say it is on the field you say you will change it. so when you create problem make sure that you give them answers or output on how you are going to do that my as my um, second advice would be because there is a number of and this is a common question and because there's a number of factors that will lead to that you may not need to give example in all of them but make sure you highlight each of these points and pick one or two 
and give example. I hope this will help you. So this is your answer when it comes to uh, you know uh, what you are going to do when your internal quality control sample failed, or what do you, or what actions are you going to take when you notice that your internal quality control sample has failed. I hope that makes sense. Thank you very much for listening. Please, can I ask you to like, share, and subscribe. I wish you all the best till I come back your way again. Bye-bye.